Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, it's Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, uh, what we're going to be talking about today is going to be relatively short. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the basics of how a mechanical watch works. And it doesn't matter what kind you have or what it looks like. Here's one mechanical watch. This is a, a Beauvais. And uh, here's another one. Uh, this is uh, El Lara. And the one I'm wearing is a uh, FP Journe. Now they're all mechanical watches. They all work on the same principle. All right. So uh, starting off, you have uh, something that needs to supply the power. And with a mechanical watch, what supplies the power is the mainspring, and it's simply the unwinding of the mainspring that provides the power for everything. And this includes everything from the time of day to a moon phase to uh, an alarm clock on, on your watch. All right, so uh, the first thing that all of you have done with a wind-up watch is you simply turn the, turn the crown, and this tightens the spring. If you have an automatic, the rotor in the back does the same thing. Now, the 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 different elements that you have for this, you have a, a barrel, and then there's, of course, there's a cover for the barrel, and so all you see is this sort of a, 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 a it looks like a big gear without any um, kinds of arms on it or anything. Well, that's the barrel, and inside of the barrel is the, is the, is the mainspring, and when you wind that up, it charges it. And so what you want it to do is slowly unwind and do it in such a way that it keeps the uh, the correct time, okay, or plus anything else you want your watch to do, any other kind of complication on it. Now, uh, what it does, it has to transmit this power or charge somehow, and it does it through the wheel train. Right, and it, it comes out and it goes through the wheel train. And the wheel train transmits it to what is is the is is really a, the escape mechanism. Now one of the main elements of the escape mechanism is called the escape wheel. Now look at the teeth on that wheel. They're, they're sort of they're they're sort of funny looking. They don't look like your the teeth on all of the gears that we just looked at. But they're special kind of teeth that will that interact with something that's called a pallet fork, and the pallet fork uh, will move back and forth. Um, let me show you what that's uh, what it looks like and how it works. Okay, you can see how the pallet fork is 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 con is moving with the escape wheel, and the way the the relationship and the interaction between the uh, pallet fork and the escape wheel goes on to control what is the heart of it, and this is the balance wheel. Now, inside of the balance wheel, there's a little spring called a hairspring, and the hairspring is, works in an oscillation. So when the the pallet kicks the uh, the wheel one way, it pops back uh, with the oscillation at a certain point. It'll it'll oscillate back and forth. It's roughly uh, turns it allows it to turn about two hundred and seventy degrees, and then it will move it back. And then power coming through the escape wheel will. Have will allow the pallet fork to move it. Now this is essentially uh, the the sequence that goes through. Now the controlled release has to somehow be communicated to the hands. Well, basically these are on gears, and then up through the gear you have a hand at which you attach, or you have a, a an axle to which you attach. The hand, and then the hands move around. There's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a complex and simple process at the same time, and so everything has to be working in conjunction with each other. 
Now, one of the things that's that's sort of interesting and 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 quite important <laughs> is the rate at which that hairspring works back and forth. Now, the hairspring manufacturing hairsprings is extremely difficult, and the only a few watch companies do it. One of the um, Narvox is, uh, is the material that uh, most hairsprings are made from. And they're made by a company that's owned by Swatch. And so most of the hairsprings and most of the watches are, are from there. Now, some watches, like Beauvais, um, some watch companies make their own hairsprings. And this is because they think that they can do a better job and that may well be true than the ones that are that they crank out as swatch. Um, that uh, other companies, uh, Rolex makes their own, and uh, several other companies do. Not several, but some other companies do. I think uh, Moser does, H Moser and C at C. So now the the hairspring can be set so that the oscillations, and again, this is in relationship not only to the hairspring, but also to the escape wheel, they can be made to oscillate at a, at a rate that is faster or slower. The faster that, a, that you have an oscillation, you have basically two major ones, four hertz and, and three hertz. And 4 hertz, I think, operates at 28,800 uh, vibrations per hour. And the 3 hertz, I think, is 16,000. And the, the faster your oscillations, the more you can, the more accurate your time is. They have one in, uh, it's called a high beat in, um, I think it's from uh, Grand Seiko. And that is like 38,000 <laughs> Uh, vibrations per hour. So that's really fast and very accurate watch. The problem uh, with them are is that when you have uh, a faster oscillation, you have uh, easier to come out of sync and so you need more frequent service. And um, so that's that's one of the issues and watchmakers and watch buyers will argue over that. Your Most of your tippity top uh, uh, watchmakers, uh, watchmakers like Beauvais and uh, F.P. Journe, uh, they have the slower rates. And I think that I think both of them are around 16 or, or one of the lower 20s that they have their watches moving at. Now, this takes much finer work on the watch. When you're building a watch, it takes more engineering and more precision. Um, to make sure everything works together because they don't. Now, remember, with a slower oscillation, you're going to lose some of your ability for accuracy. And so you have to make the watch so that it, it, it's not going to be inaccurate. And so it, it's, it's, it's a lot more involved. But it's sort of an interesting thing that your, your, your very best uh, uh, watch companies have a slower rate. I was surprised when I first learned that. Okay, now when we um, when we look at everything, when everything uh, we have sort of the whole gang there, so you can see is that it, starting with the mainspring and uh, it goes through the wheels, through the wheel chain, and then to the escape wheel, and then the escape wheel allows the amount of movement through the through the wheels that will turn turn the hands on the watch and you can see sort of the the minute hand is that big long hand and the hour hand is the shorter one and then the red hand is the second hand so each one has a different gear uh, as a uh, in general your uh, hour hand is the well it depends on the watch and and how they make it it's generally a, a a little larger so that it moves slower than the minute hand okay well now <laughs> that was uh sort of a over a, just a very general overview and there are the variations and so forth but it's just important to understand when you if you're a watch collector of mechanical watches 
You need to know this basic sequence that starts with the mainspring, goes through the wheel chain, the gear chain, goes through the escapement, runs, operates through the balance wheel that then goes up and sets the hands at the date. All right, well, listen, I'd like to hear your comments on it. And if you're a watchmaker, I'm, <laughs> I hope you're not. You, you might have a, like, oh boy, does this guy. It's, it's just a simple one for beginners. All right, well, um, that's all for today. Uh, There's an invitation to subscribe if you like. And until next week, and if I don't see you next week, Happy New Year. Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of Watch Collection. Mm -hmm.